Alisa Ferreira is a lawyer, animal advocate, and a speaker in Alianza Animal, and also a director of Effective Vegan Adva Advocacy Movement in Portugal. Alisa will explain what effective communication is and how it is a fundamental tool to work with society, demonstrating it with some examples of Alianza Animal programs. So welcome, Alisa, and we are looking Hi. forward to our, pre Thank our presentation. You so much. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, everyone. Uh, maybe I will be looking to the side because I need to look to your faces. This is the different talking without people. So maybe my eyes will be on you and that way I won't feel here alone. I want to thank you so much for everyone that are spending your time to learn more so we can be stronger and work more effectively for the animals. And I want to thank you so much to the organization for the invitation and for organizing this amazing, this amazing conference. Uh, it, it's huge what you're doing, so thank you. Um, yes, um, I'm going to, to talk a little about effective communication. Of course, we don't have time to go deep uh, in the, the subjects we will talk, but it will be enough, I think, for us to start thinking about. So, next slide. Hmm. We start with problems. Changing the slide. Hmm. I'm so sorry. The slides are not uh, changing. Uh, just, just try uh, STS. Exit. Oh, uh, you try exit. Exit. It's not happening. Okay. Uh, reach. <laughs> I can call my technician. This is stealing me minutes. Oh my god. I will definitely yeah. call him. I'm I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm going to call uh, uh Juan. I don't know why this always happens to me. <laughs> yeah, Technical we try it. Problems. It, it, work, it works. No I don't know. <laughs> it's not changing. How did it change? Where? I want no. Just wait. Just wait. Okay, he comes and it happens. It's always like this. So I'm so sorry. Now I have to be faster. Uh, okay, so I will start presenting myself. I am Elisa Nair Freire. I am the co founder of Alliance Animal with Maria Aragão, my friend and colleague uh, of many years. And we have decided to create AA, uh, thinking of what is most important in all societies, like the basis. Uh, and we found that food, education, and law could be um, the, 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 the fundamental pillars of societies. And for that, uh, we had to find the, the people um, with whom to, to do this work. And this is part of the effective uh, vegan advocacy too, because uh, if you have the people in some area, we can make it more professional if we know what we're talking about um so next it's working the slides are working okay so um this subject of effective communication is something that i have been studying in these last these few years because uh well maria aragon she's an activist for 15 years i am about 80 years and uh, we had time and every of us have time to observe and to, to see what is working, what's not working. We had time to learn because the movement has decades. Um, maybe the, the new ones don't know, but we are doing this for decades. And we have been focusing in showing the invisible problem. And that was really, really important at, at one time and it's still important. But uh, with the time that we had to, to learn and 
society all also had time uh, to change and to start opening their doors. And I can tell you that uh, if at the beginning we were knocking doors to, to try to help, uh, in the last few years, this society that is calling us. And so we believe that we should use those doors that are being opened and creating bridges. That's what Alliance Animal do, does. We create bridges and then we try to use the strength of society, of non-vegans. We, we put them working with us to, together. And of course, that when we want to cooperate with someone, Communication is the basis of everything. If we can't communicate, we can't construct. So we realized we have to learn more about communication. And uh, we were so lucky because many uh, animal advocates are uh, doing that work, like Melanie Joy, for years. And so it's easier for us to, to learn and to share uh, this work. So I know I have to be faster. <laughs> we have really few minutes. Um, I, I want you to, to think and to look uh, at what's happening, like we're David and Goliath. You know, it's um, a way of, of understanding that, okay, we can, we can win this fight, but uh, there are no mirac miracles like in the Bible. So that's the main difference. And we, we are small, smaller, and we have a lack of tools and what do they have in the other side and the other side we can say it's the old system it's the old system with huge companies uh, all kind of companies and they have the power huge power and influence and they have the money and they have the expertise so they they can hire the best expertise they they are available in the market like the best uh in marketing and then they benefit for having a long existence is the system is is what what's happening is that everything is constructed like like this and then they also benefit for uh, from the world dependence on animal exploitation and this is very important for us to keep in mind because sometimes we we forget uh what we are up against and uh it, it, it's very important to remember that we should cooperate and ally our strength and i like to to think of us in the movement like an orchestra okay and okay it's beautiful to listen to one instrument but if we can coordinate our instruments, each group playing its own instruments, and if we can play aligned, we can make a magnific magnificent result, like in an orchestra. So effective vegan uh, advocacy uh, is inviting people among the movement to cooperate. This is a huge message if we could play aligned and what can we do we can do lots of things and uh we will be more effective doing uh the best uh instruments we can play like we are exposing the invisible problem uh in the streets in events documentaries uh we, we are keep doing it uh we also can work undercover to get footage so we can have proof and uh, many groups are helping to build sanctuaries for farm animals. I believe in almost all the countries. Um, we can work to influence political power so we can pass some laws. We can create vegan business. We, we see vegan business uh, appearing every day. We can work with restaurants and, uh, restaurants and canteens like we're doing working with companies for more options available everywhere and cheaper. Uh, there are some people among us developing be better alternative products because the products have really to be good. And uh, that's also happening. Developing studies and data because we need good arguments and facts. And we also have people working on that or academic fields. Uh, that are being explored. 
or making donations so and so on so we we can do lots of things we can think that this is a fight that we can win alone okay we can do this alone and most important of it it's time for us to understand that in this orchestra we are all motivated by the same aim so let's not see like we are doing different things alone okay this is my first invitation for you to think about and having all this in mind let me just take your screens to another part sorry so i can see um we we should uh, invite everyone to discuss not not only the groups okay we we should see non-vegans also as vegan allies and we should create these bridges we could see society as a whole and let us think having all this in mind we are really few we are really few and we know we have the data that we are more or less three percent in the world population and this is including vegetarians so uh, we can think that we can do this alone so if we welcome everyone and everyone can contribute to to this transition we can welcome reducitarians because they will have a, a very powerful effect in the world transition uh let us think the supermarkets are full of vegan products nowadays but who are buying those products i'm sure it's not vegans we know where the really good products are uh in the small vegan stores so who is buying all those products are reduce reducers and because of that instead of seeing what they are not doing i i believe we should focus in what uh is the help that they're doing because they, they are increasing the demand so more vegan products are getting ava available everywhere and cheaper and that way making it easier for everyone to go vegan and even who is not vegetarian you know like like the owner of a restaurant when we get non-vegans involved uh, it's probable probably they will start thinking and may become vegans too and most important, everyone is contributing to reduce, uh, reduce the, the suffering. And then we can be like Bruce Lee. Uh, we can use, like in martial arts, we can use the other strength for the benefit of the animals. And for that, if we are discreet, if we are uh if we are fast and if we are strong but most of all if we are well trained and we can study uh we can learn and we can even put uh companies working for the animals without they they realizing that they're doing it so effective communication um it's uh in the words of Melanie Joy, um, that is specialized, I believe that everyone knows her work. Uh, my PowerPoint has some boxes. Mm, sorry, sometimes it disappears. Uh, in her words, effective vegan advocacy is communicating in a way that increases the chances the other will allow themselves to be influenced and it is not changing hearts and minds how we would like we would like to make that magic and change them but maybe our role is to open to to help that part to open their hearts and minds and so effective communication appears here as the foundation of effective advocacy like a, a method uh, and set of skills that everyone can learn if we are really committed we can learn like Sometimes I think that to have a profession, we are studying four or five years or more, and we start that work uh, and we know nothing at the beginning. So why should the animals deserve less? So in another words, making it simple, uh, talking in uh, effective communication 
is a way uh, to talk with the others like we would like the others to talk with us, like talking in a respectful way um, that instead of making non-vegans run away or attacking us or our message, they might want to listen. Okay, so it, it's very important. And in in the movements, oh, my slides are not changing again. I'm sorry, why this is happening to me all the time? I and computers, it's not changing. It's not changing. Maybe I will do this without slides. Oh, it changed. Let me see, it changed. So uh, having in mind what effective communication is, okay, with respect and consideration, the way you, you would like someone to talk with you. And let us think, think, what have we been doing? It's not what we are doing, is it? We have been fighting and it's comprehensible because we have this um, conscience of what's happening with the animals non-vegans they they don't know they don't know what you're talking about they are so far so they they really don't understand why we are so mad so maybe we can use all this strength strength that comes from where we are mad and start talking in another way with people like really listening to them and improving the contents of our conversations and i believe that we are all doing nowadays we we have lots of good arguments and we we are doing that but it's it's not the content that worries me the most it's the process because we see that all of us have seen it and sees every day at facebook and everywhere that we are fighting people because we are talking with this passion okay but let's see the process of uh, a message we have uh, someone talking to the other, okay, and uh, both sides, um, the the receiver and the the person who is talking, both are, will be the, the the both parts at the same time while they're talking, but we must remember that communication, the channel of communication, sometimes suffers noise, and it it might happen that the what we want to say in the end will be completely distorted. It can happen. So if we are aware that this can happen, and if we understand what noise it is, we can we, we have in our hands how to make it louder. And what what noise what noises do we know? Of course, it can be an objective barrier, like real noise, if we are trying to talk in a concert. Uh, maybe you won't hear exactly what I am telling you. Or if I don't know, have all the language, all the words to express myself, or if I don't know the contents, uh, that might be a physical barrier too. So it's, it's a noise. Or the opposite, too much information. And sometimes we want to veganize someone so fast and then we, we talk too much and people can cannot attend all that information. But then there are the emotional barriers and these ones we can learn how to control too. So let's just imagine this happened to us in some moments, if we are sad or if we are mad or with lots of stress, uh, you can be one of both sides, but uh, uh, this will happen because you can't express yourself in the best way if you're mad. Imagine it with your boyfriend or girlfriend. And this is effective communication is good not only in the cause in our personal lives too, but if if you're mad and you're talking when you're mad, you won't express yourself the same way. And if you're trying to listen but you are not paying attention because you're stressed. Uh, it inf will influence the, the message too. But worse than that, 
and this happens a lot, is that we go to conversations in a narcissistic way because we feel that we are doing so much more good that then our ego uh, won't allow us to, to respect the other person. And this will influence the message too. Or the person who is listening maybe uh, has some stereotypes. And when we are starting to talk, they already have their idea. So the message will be influenced too. But in the movement, we, we can start with our attitude. It's the, the best way to change the way we talk. It is to understand what would work the best. And so if we look to the definition, of course, you have uh, listened to this, um, these words like being a pragmatic or being a dogmatic. And what does this mean? Sometimes I think that people use these words without understanding what we are trying to say. Because being pragmatic, it means that we attend the reality. Because if we want to create solutions, as it's time to create solutions, we have to create a solution that uh, match the, the problem. And if we don't attend the reality, it just won't match. And uh, we will create the solution that uh, match the most. Okay. And this is better than or being uh, to fix theories and ideas and rules and the opposite being dogmatic means that we have an idea and we already believe that that this is the best idea so we are right we don't have to question what we believe nowadays because we believe we are right but that means that everyone else is wrong and nobody likes to feel that they're wrong Okay, so let's let's try to have an attitude that don't show us a split like this way. Uh, sometimes we feel like, like we are heroes, vegan heroes, because you're saving animals. But uh, this way, uh, it happens that we see the world in black and white, like if we are the hero, everyone else is the devil, okay? And, and this is not, we were the devil before, if you see it this way. And uh, this makes us think too, that if we have this division, how do non-vegans see us where they are with their lack of empathy and knowledge that we have? So I, I'm sure that they won't see us as vegan heroes. It's more like they, they see us uh, in stereotypes, okay? so. We have to be to be careful because uh, it's not most important to to be right. We can have the the reason, okay, and we do. But people where they are, they don't know that. So let's not let's try to not feed stereotypes. And I bring you here a graphic um, by Tobias Leonard that he 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 points. This is a, a, a well well good point that uh, made me understand why it's so important to change our attitude when while we were working for the animals and so i decided to bring it to you so we can think together if if we look to society we see that we are evolving okay and there are lots of different causes that we can observe to to learn and for instance if we think about child abuse well maybe almost 100% of the world population is against child abuse. So the more people we have on boards in a cause, the, the more force and pressure we can make. So if we talk really angry uh, against child abuse, no one is going to tell that we are being radical. No one, because everyone is radical in this. Okay, Everyone is on board. But we, if we think, about pets okay not everyone is on board but lots of, of people are on board and so when some small dog is hurt if something happens all the news everyone is angry because of that so we we can use that force and maybe we can start uh, to ask for the criminalization of uh, those actions but but what about animals that are used for food okay we 
we believe that we are around 3%, 4% of the population world. It, it's not enough. We don't have enough people on board. So we can use all that pressure. And when we are mad, people don't understand. So uh, my invitation for all of you is to think that, okay, we are in this early stage of the fight. And maybe it's moment for us to invite more people to be on board with us, even in an imperfect way. Because when we are, when we have a better number, okay, okay, we, we can have another conversation in that moment. And we should also remember that uh, being anger, uh, angry and talking in a way that uh, we appear like with um, moral su superiority uh, have some consequences, bad consequences for the animals because our work is not the, the best. We won't get the best results. But what happens to us? Everyone knows and have colleagues that we saw them burning out, being so tired because what happens? If I can't explain myself, hey, I feel alone, I feel frustrated and tired and then relationships even among us in our families among vegans they they will broke okay and it's a cycle if i am frustrated i will uh, i will work worse for the animals so uh, everyone loses so uh we should learn effective communication and it's really easy nowadays the internet is full of techniques it's not only in the, in the movement, everyone sees that we are not communicating very well because fights are happening in all the groups of every subject. We are so polarized, but this is not for us. So we can make this for the animals and we can learn some techniques. This is easy. Okay, The education being polite is the basis of all. Of course, we can learn how to look in the eyes like this, nothing, showing that we are interested, asking questions, involving the other, blocking the thoughts when we want to interrupt them. It, and this is already good. But the best and a little more difficult, it's to absorb the principles because the principles, you might know that they exist, but you really have to understand them and to absorb them. Okay? This you, you can't fake, you can't fake this. Uh, we should go to all conversations not feeling superior and we we should uh go with empathy and really listening to the other okay but with their mind not with with our mindset with their minds we we can be talking about one, one person or one kind of audience and we should make them appreciate and this means that while we are talking with someone this way we will find a common ground. We, we can do this with everyone, even if this is someone that is really different from us, but there's something that we can find that it's a common ground. And we were, we, we were meat eaters. We, we unfortunately, we didn't uh, born like vegans, so we know their language too. We can talk their language too. And the, the best news is that we can use nowadays all all the arguments and we can in in the conversation that we are having we can see which argument fits the best of course we would like to use the the argument of compassion and ethics this is what we would like to happen um, but we know and we have data that show us uh, actually uh, people have different levels of empathy and maybe us, the first vegans, we are the ones that are most, more sensitive, okay? And lots of people will change first for the animals, but we know it, it doesn't work that way for, for a great audience. So we can promise more nature, saving the planet. This, this has a great audience for this argument or more justice, okay? We can use the land to feed more people instead of feeding animals for us to, to eat. 
we can promise more else because we also have data we we don't have to lie this is true so many people start because they think they will be healthier and they will and we can promise more flavor this is a world of flavors it, it's really huge uh before knowing vegan foods we know nothing about lots of different flavors this is huge and of course there's always this argument vegan is more cool okay maybe we don't like that this looks like a trend we don't like that because we are afraid that people are going to try and then they go back but maybe there's a large audience for this okay and if we try to show the movement like attractive, more positive, like more cool, maybe people that wouldn't try at all, they will try. And then there's a chance that they will keep vegan. And in that, in that while, even if they go back, they already saved some animals, they helped demand to increase. So let, let's not be afraid to use all the arguments. So let me show you some of the work that we have been doing in Alianza Animal. Uh, after we learned that we, we could uh, adapt our work to society. So we, we started uh, working with the law community. As I told you, I'm a lawyer and we have more lawyers in the group. So this makes it easier. Like I told you, we can play different instruments, but if you play the instrument that you know, how to play, you can be more professional. So we have done, I don't know if you know, in Portugal, we had the two happy moments. We changed our criminal code and our civil codes. So now there are two crimes against uh, an, a pet uh, companion animals. And in our civil code, uh, animals are not objects anymore. So you can imagine how different it is to talk about these changes in the law and if you're a vegan because when you're telling uh, you're talking in universities or in the bar association and or, or the police station as we did and telling them that animals are not objects anymore of course we can make them think that we're talking about all the animals and this has been really great here we are um, you can see us in the bar association and uh, in universities and always with lots of people attending and uh, we have participated in the two first post-graduation courses in the law school um, in um, lisbon university and i was able to talk about veganism and carnism and uh, my first theme it was non-violence and food option and uh, last year, it was the power of the citizen activists. Like I was trying to, to show everyone, even if they're not vegan, that we have so much power in our hands. So we took this to universities. And of course, uh, everywhere we go, even if it's only to talk, we take vegan food. I can promise you it's the best flyer ever. It has to be good, okay? Food has really to be good and we we offer this is not a problem we we always offer the coffee break then working with public institutions this means schools um universities municipalities and uh we have plenty of different games uh talks um we have uh, all all the intervention interventions created for each age um with the help of a psychologist so we we we're talking about effective communication so it, with this detail if we are talking to small children we have to remember that they will go home and we don't want them to have problems at home so we are trying to make them doing these workshops to make peace with vegetables okay so parents will be happy but we try not to create problems at home and try not to create problems with schools so they keep opening their doors and look at this so much happiness uh, this this is my best audience my favorite audience 
usually they they are very happy in the day we spend with them in the school and as you can see we have the chance to to touch hundreds there are hundreds of kids and young people okay and they're really interested in the subjects it's just that we 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 don't want to tell them everything at the same time we are here to to put a seed okay uh, and then the next time they will hear something about the animals or the environment well they they will become experts in the subject and will try to teach their parents then uh, we work with restaurants and canteens and here you see maria regal my colleague Maria, she has been an activist for 15 years and she has, we can say, more than 100 workshops. And there she is in a kitchen of a school teaching the ladies. And they were so happy because they, they know how to cook. We only have sometimes to, to, to knock down the meat, you know. And uh, well, th this is like, like in the music, if you want to do this work, First, you have to find the talent, okay? Like the, the singer. And here we have the talent. And after that, you find the other musicians, the, the rest of the team. So if you have someone that is le legitimated, and Maria also is the author of a recipe book. This is a kind of a revolution here in Portugal, because you know, we are a country with lots of traditional foods. This doesn't happen in all the countries, but here, it's, it's really difficult because we are very attached uh, um, to our traditional food. And in her book, she uh, calls omelets without eggs. And she really does omelets without eggs. She veganized lots of traditional dishes. And uh, nowadays we have lots of blogs and other, uh, other colleagues that are making it. So after having the person, uh, that has some legitimacy to, to talk with restaurants, owners and chefs. Okay, we have created this program. E o seu restaurante já tem? In Portuguese sounds better. In English is something like, and your restaurant already has it. What, what am I missing? Vegan options. Okay, so this is our flyer. And you can see there uh, that is rujões. It's a typical dish from Portugal. And uh, the other side of the pamphlet, uh, where we talk their language. Okay, so we don't say here in this pamphlet, do this for the animals, please have some compassion. Of course not. You, you know, companies, they, they have to make a profit by law. It's by law. They, they are not moral people like physical people. So we talk their language and we show them you can make a profit exploit exploit the exploitation of vegetables is good too and then we have two packages um of consultation we we do a, a complete program of consultation and we we give reliable training in the kitchens as you could see and then in the end we offer a certificate and this is good for two reasons okay uh, vegans will feel more comfortable to to have some meals in a non a non vegan restaurants because sometimes that's a problem for us but this way they are so involved and they are so happy that well they're proud of their certificates and they don't want they want to keep their words that the the dishes that they, they now have available are completely vegan Okay, and here we are. This is um, a page of a magazine of um, a very important uh, national newspaper, Publico. And uh, here uh, it says, they don't serve animals, they serve the animals. And I, I really loved how they wrote this. They, they said, Maria and Elisa, they are not chefs, but they get into restaurants infiltrate in their kitchens and discreetly they are uh, making a revolution in our gastronomy and as you can see we we are not doing that work with our t-shirts like we we don't we don't look like vegans and it was so funny that this was their idea and 
this worries me a lot, but okay, we heard for more than one person, you don't look like vegans. And this was a very interesting conversation because I asked, how, how do vegans look like? But you see, we, we have these stereotypes and sometimes if we can match the audience, like for instance, if I go to a school, of course I will uh, have some colors on me or a dress because I'm going to talk to kids. Or if I go to an art school, well, maybe I'll show part of my green hair that's hidden, or maybe I will show my piercing. Okay, I, I will match the audience. Like Nick Cooney is telling that for years. So it really works dress for the occasion. So we try to look professional doing this work and there, there's nothing to, to be shame on that. It's like we are working. And this is a bad joke, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is the moment that I'll show you some of the, the food that we are uh, making available in the restaurants. Uh, that sandwich that you see that covered with cheese, it's called Francesinha. And if you come to Portugal one, one time, you, you really have to taste it because it's the anti-vegan dish of excellence. You know, this is a sandwich full of different meats inside and sausage and ham all grilled full of meat and then covered with cheese and then there's this amazing sauce with beer and other liquors but with bone uh, boiled bones inside so you can see this is a, a traditional dish from porto and i can tell you that restaurants sell thousands thousands of french zinish people are coming from all over the world to try french zinish so this was huge. I don't have time to tell you the story, but after we veganized the first restaurants uh, and put it the, the vegan francesinha, it, it's crazy. Other restaurants were calling us, they wanted to have it too. And now they are selling, it's not hundred, it's thousands of vegan francesinhas too. And because we are uh, now friends of the owners, because we get, we get clothes, after this work usually we keep a friendship with the restaurants and they they give us the, the data and we know that almost everyone that are trying them are not vegan okay because it's not a vegan restaurant so see how important it is to mix with society because maybe all those people will never come into a vegan restaurant and now only to, to show you these are starters okay and we we help restaurants to put what they already have in their menus in the consultation okay we see what kind of restaurant it is so we prepare starters the main dishes it can be a traditional restaurant or a fast food or a healthy one or a gourmet one so we we make what they all are already selling and desserts there are nothing there is nothing we can do nowadays and that's the magic that maria does Okay, there's nothing she can't veganize. And in these last few years, I don't know how it is in your countries, but here in Portugal, you know, we, we are the kind of people that go to the street and take coffee almost uh, every day. One, two, three coffees a day because it's not expensive. And we have, we, we used to eat cakes in the street too. There's plenty of traditional pastry, like, like this is the same. Okay, but for many years, we couldn't find it vegan okay so it helps a lot it makes it easier for people to go vegan if they know that they can keep this habit in the streets oh i can go and i can have my coffee and my pastel nata okay and now it's not only one project or one pastry it's lots of them and because of this approach and because we are giving people what they want to eat we are invited to uh, be present in big non-vegan events, okay? The, uh, you can see there, Eishponor. Uh, this is a four days fair, only for professionals of restaurants and hospitality. And we were, were invited to be there. They gave us a stance for us to be there to talk with professionals. Like they, they told us in their email, we believe that this is the future. And because you're professionals, we have to know about it. 
So we were there for four days cooking for them to taste and talking about our program. And in the other side, you can see Academia de Formadores. This is a three days Congress. That's two minutes. Oh. <laughs> okay, quickly. Um, this is a three days Congress uh, for the teachers of, uh, it, it's made for the uh, tourism of Portugal. Okay, and it's for teachers of catering and restaurants of and hospitality. And we were there to show them how plant based food is the future. Okay, and they have invited us. So, do, how do you think that happens? It, it has all to be with the approach. Um, in one minute, just to tell you that we do more things, we run also the vegan challenge in Portugal. Uh, we work with, uh, we, we do other events and uh, we work with other organizations. That's really important too, national and international ones. And also, we don't keep all these for us. We also work within the vegan community. We have this site, uh, Effective Vegan Advocacy, where we translate and make subtitles for relevant talks and articles, so it, uh, they are available for everyone. And we have already organized two SIVA trainings. If you don't know, it's the Center for Effective Vegan Advocacy. It's a two day two days course by Melanie Joy and Tobias Leonard, where we talk uh, about lots of important things, but we, we learn effective communication that all the groups can use. It's, it's most important when you want to work within society, Okay, but everyone can learn and use in um, the, their own work. So thank you so much. Um, enjoy uh, the rest of the conference and please work with a smile if you can. Try to celebrate all the small victories, focus in the positive aspects, okay? And thank you so much for attending. Thank you, Elisa. I want to join you in Portugal, <laughs> like now. <laughs> You'll get fatter here. <laughs> oh, yeah. never mind. Uh, we have one question. Uh, we have one question. Uh, Hola de Portugal from Vivienne. How can I get a restaurant that doesn't currently have a vegan option to find out about your uh, e also restaurante Yatem campaign in Porto? Okay, okay. Uh, well, th there are in, in Porto, there are uh, already lots of restaurants. Um, in these last three years, we, we certified more than 50 restaurants, and most of them are in Porto. But for instance, if you have a restaurant near your workplace and you would like it to have vegan options, and if you are someone that they already know, that if you are nice, okay, this is the most important thing that you are nice. We shouldn't get mad because we ask for a vegan option and then they bring it with tuna because you know tuna comes from a tree <laughs> people don't know and sometimes we tend to get mad but okay let's start doing this let's think they don't know so let's be nice and tell them i want to help you okay this is not a vegan option or maybe this don't don't happen and you say oh i, I would like to have lunch here and more colleagues Maybe you could have vegan options, and they will answer something. And then you can say, you can say, uh, there is this group, Alliance Animal, that they help restaurants to put vegan options on their menus. Okay, and they they can give you the consultation, and then you can send the the link, or uh, it's available. You find uh, at Facebook our page, and um, or our email, and they can call us and. We can do this even dur uh, during the pandemics because we can make it like this. Maria is teaching people uh, on the computer. Okay, so is it possible to just of course, uh, everywhere tell about you and uh, they can call you, yeah. write you, and learn yeah, it's something? Easy. We just have to keep in mind that the 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 beginning of the conversation we really have to be nice. Okay, thank you very much. I must stop you, but. It's so complicated for me because I want to know more about you. But anyway, in discussion, maybe in discussion room. We don't have uh, more minutes. Evening. It's over. Yeah, Our yeah, minutes. it's yeah. it's already over, and uh, we will waiting for another presentation. 
So thank you, uh, thank you for your inspiration and good luck with everything. And thank you, the same to all of you, and you're doing a great job too. Thank you so much. <laughs>